Hi guys, this is Andrew Burgess for NetTuts, and in today's quick tip, we're going to talk about Git hooks. A Git hook is simply a shell script that Git will run at a specific time. For example, maybe it will run it just before you make a commit, or maybe it will run it just before you rebase, or maybe it will run it on the repository on your server just after you have made a push to that server. There are a lot of tasks that you might want to do around these specific times, so Git allows you to create a hook that will make it really easy for Git to run this script at the appropriate time. The example I want to show you right now is running a test suite before you make a commit. The neat thing about this is that we can actually make it so that if the test suite does not pass, it won't allow us to commit. So this way we can only commit if we have passing tests. So let's go ahead and see how this would work. Right now I'm in a little project folder on my desktop and as you can see we have just two files here, a person.js file and a person test.js file inside of a test directory. If we open up the person file here, you can see that we simply have a person object and we're putting a single method on the prototype, which is just a greet method which takes another person object and returns hello person name. Now if we look at the person test file here, you can see that we're just using the mocha test framework, which is very similar to Jasmine. We just create two people here and p1.greet p2 should equal hello Collis. As you can see, we have a person here with the name Jeff, person here with the name Collis, and when p1 greets p2, we should have hello Collis. I can run this simply by running Mocha. I have Mocha set up here in my terminal and you can see that that test passes. So let's see what the status of this project is. Currently, nothing has been tracked. Okay, so I'm just going to run git add dot. So we add everything and then we'll just run git commit initial commit. Excellent. So now if we run git status, you can see that our working directory is clean. Okay, so now we want to create a git hook so that when we create another test that does not pass, we won't be allowed to make a commit. So let me open up our .git folder here. You can see this is the .git folder. This is the git database within the repository and this is where all the information is stored. Notice here we have a hooks folder and if I open this up, we have a bunch of files here. These are actually the eight different types of git hooks that we can do you'll notice that each of them have dot sample at the end of them. And this is because each one of these is just an example script that you might want to run in each one of these cases. I'll include a link to Git documentation underneath this video where you can read more about how, what each one of these does. However, in our case, we want to look at the pre-commit hook. And this is what we're going to be doing. So if I come back to the terminal and I want to open dot git slash hooks and I want to open pre-commit. Now this can be any script that will run in the shell. We're going to be writing a bash script, but you could make this a Perl script, a Ruby script, a Python script, anything you want, as long as it can be run on a command line. The important thing to note in this case is that if we return an exit code other than zero, the commit that was initiated will not be run. This will be run with uh, user bin and sh. And um, before we actually go any further with this, I'm going to close this and I'm going to show you the output that we're going to be working with. So when I run Mocha, as you could see, we have a single test that passed. However, if I run Mocha with the dash r json flag, this means we'll get json output. And notice up here in the stats section, we have this line right here that says failures and zero. Now we could do this with Ruby or something and actually parse this JSON. We're just going to do this really simply and get this as text. And we're going to make sure that this here says zero after the word failures here. And if it doesn't say zero, then we won't allow the commit to happen. So what we have to first do is just get failures out here. So if we start with mocha dash r JSON, then let's see, we can grep failures. And if we grep for failures, you can see that we just get these two lines here, one that says failure zero, and then one which is an array of all the failures which took place. Obviously, there's nothing in that array. Okay, so we need to just get the first line. So we can say dash m1 to just return the first result. And now we're just getting this line, which says failures zero. Excellent. So the one more thing, we're going to pipe this to awk. And we can ask awk just to print out the second field. And by default, awk fields are space delimited. So this will give us the zero and comma. And you can see if I run that, we can get zero comma put out here. So this is going to be good enough for our script. All right, so let's go back to vim here dot git slash hooks slash pre dash commit. All right, so what we're going to want to do is first, we'll just store this in a variable called num. And in backticks, we'll paste that line that we just copied. So now that num variable is going to equal the number of failures that took place plus a comma after that. Now we just have to do a really simple if statement. So we'll say if square bracket num does not equal zero and a comma, then we're going to echo tests do not pass and we're just going to exit with one. So we're gonna use a non-zero exit code, then fi closes our if statement. And it's that simple, that is our entire script. So we just have to get the number of failures, match the string to zero comma. If it doesn't match, then we know we have failures, and so we can exit. So now if I save and quit this, 
let's write another test to check this out. So we're going to open our test file here and down at the bottom here, let's create another test. So we'll say it greets strings and it can be as simple as uh, var p1 equals new person Jeff. And then all we have to do is say p1 dot greet and we'll just pass in the string name callus dot should equal hello callus. There we go. So now if I save this and I actually run it normally with Mocha, you can see that the second test fails. One of two tests are failing. So I'll go ahead and add everything there to the staging area. And now if I run get status, you can see that we have that one file that has been changed and we're going to commit. But before we actually make the commit, there's one thing I forgot that we have to do before our hook will actually work. And that is we have to mark that hook file as being executable. So we want to chmod it to add execution to it. And we're just going to pass the path to that file. So now if I list out the git hooks, you can see right here we have our pre-commit file, and that's the file that's going to prevent us from committing when we try to commit. In fact, before we do, let me just show you here that we do have one of two tests failing, so you know that this test, person greets strings, is not going to work. And now if we run git commit dash m, I'll just say more tests. Now you can see that we just get the message tests do not pass and the commit has not been made. As you can see there, we have git status, the commit has not been made. So now if I open up the person file and we can make this work by just saying something like person is gonna equal if type of person is not equal to string, then this will equal person.name, otherwise it will just equal person. And then down here, we just change this to just be person. So now if we run Mocha, you can see that both the tests will pass. And now if we re-add all the files, and run git commit. You can see that those two files were changed and the commit was made and now our working directory is clean. So that is one handy way that you can use git hooks to speed up your workflow. Now, if you're interested in learning some more advanced usages of Git hooks, I recommend you check out this link that was sent to me by one of the other staff authors here on NetTuts, Dan Harper. This is talking about how to deploy a project with a Git push. As you can see here, this solution actually works with the post update hook, which works with the Git repository on your server, so that when you push changes up to your server, it's actually going to redeploy your production website without you having to do a single thing. Git can automate all of that and you just make one push to your server and your project gets redeployed. So I'll have a link to this as well down below this video. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll talk to you later.